in this tutorial, by request, we'll take another look at uh, axes and maybe clear this up a little bit. In fact, we'll look at one thing we haven't looked at before is no, normally when you start out by default you're in global axis mode like this and we'll look, we've looked at global and local axes before but we'll also look at the normal axis as well and this is pretty cool and we'll start with that in this case and usually I use that in conjunction with the camera so right now if I was to grab another uh, window here like this and look at it in camera view press 0 there I'm going to try and cha change where I'm looking for starters and where'd my camera go? <laughs> no, there it is. Let me move it back like this. And I'm moving it on the global axis right there in Y. But maybe over here I'll put an empty into the scene. Like this. And I'm going to grab the camera first. And then I'm going to shift click that guy. And then I can control T to track to that constraint. Now I'm looking at this. And you can verify that by when I grab the empty and move it up and down. It changes this. And I do this so I want to change the, I want to make sure I'm looking at all of them so I can see I'm not I'm uh, I'm too close to the view and this is actually a great example but maybe I like this view I maybe I like the angle in which the camera is pointing like this and I don't want to change that but if I was to take this and try and adjust it being on the global axis like that then it would it's kind of skewing the view at the same time so in order to maintain that because I want to move this camera either straight back or straight forward and the way you do that easiest way is just change it over to the normal like this and then of course then the axis is pointing directly behind it so then when I grab it like this I can move it straight in and straight out and that's really really useful like that alright so that's one aspect of it the other thing well, then we'll look at the local and global axes as well and this is particularly important for a particle system too because when you're set into global mode most of the time you just uh, come up into here and I'll look at the particle system where is it set right in here and I'm emitting the particles for this particular particle system perpendicular to the face of the plane that's what normal means it means perpendicular for those of you who are not math inclined so and it's a goofy term they should just say perpendicular <laughs> but that's all right. So, um, but the particle system, if you want to use X, Y, and Z, let's try it differently. So here's the, here's X is in the red axis, and here's Y green. So let's, maybe I want to move the particles this direction. You would think, okay, I'll move it on the X axis like this. So I'll turn this down to zero, and then they're just falling down under the weight of gravity. They're not actually being pushed in any particular direction down there. In fact, let's see if we can verify that. Let's go down here to the field weights. Let's turn gravity to zero see what happens. There it is. They're just sitting there right on the plane like that. All right, but I want to admit it on this x-axis. So if I come up to the x-axis and change this and I'll just, well, I'll just crank it up like this. And it is emitting on the x-axis. Now this is just going to kick my tail because I must have this rotated. All right, hang on. Let's do one thing. I must have rotated this plane. Let me I'm going to press Alt R and see if I can clear any rotations. And no, there's no rotations cleared on it. Ah, oh, that is goofy. Cuz normally that only admits on your local axis. Oh yeah, okay. No, it's right. It is your local axis. I'm cr I'm right. So it looks like it's on this, but now for instance, now let's say I take the object and local coordinates and I rotate it on Y so I rotate it this way like this and you'll notice the x-axis is still pointing this way so now suddenly my this effect doesn't make any sense except when I show it in local mode now it's pointing in the direction that I want or if I want to change it into or Z instead I'll change that that way and put this back to zero and then I'm pointing it that way so particle emitter emitters work on local axes and you need to be able to access them I like that as well and then it's the same thing when you know when you're rotating it's basically the other thing is you want to rotate things in the scene and uh, well, we'll just keep, we'll keep using this one right now I'll, I'll just go back to global mode for the second here so now if I want to rotate this uh, well, let's say I want the rotation to be normal. 
I want to rotate around the axis that is normal to this face, so pointing straight up perpendicular to the blue face right now. And I want to rotate my object around like that. Well, there's no real way to do it in global mode because of the way the vectors are pointing. And if I go into local mode, well, local actually would work in this case. So what we can do is to rotate it, if I was, to, I wonder, this is Z, blue is Z, and if I just rotate around Z by pressing R followed by Z, and I rotate it, it's rotating around the global Z axis like that. But in order to rotate around the local axis, you have to press R to go into rotate mode, then you have to press Z, and then you have to press Z again. So pressing Z twice, and then it switches it to the local axis, and then you're rotating around the axis like that. All right, so. Uh, that's just a few more tidbits. Hope that gives you some additional insight into how to use it. But uh, the normal axis is really cool for the view. That's really what I dig the most. But these are the local axis is really important as well. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.